Good day everyone. Today I want to do some example problems uh, in our basic probability section. Now the tool that I'm going to be using is Excel here and this is mostly because a lot of these problems that we're going to be working with we can actually basically do everything inside of Excel uh, and it's nice because uh, we don't have to have uh, multiple different uh, softwares open up at once. We will use R Commander a lot, but for this section Excel seems to be the easiest tool to use. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of work through this problem and we'll call this problem probability of a vowel. Okay, and let's go ahead and read our, our question here. So it says, if you randomly select a letter from the phrase, I like to swim at the recreation pavilion, what is the probability that you selected a vowel? Okay, and it's wanted us to answer in the form of reduced fraction. I, this is what it's going to want. I really don't care if it's in a reduced fraction or really what I'd much rather prefer is it in a decimal form. Uh, but the process that we're going to do is the same. First thing that we need to know is since we are interested in vowels, we're going to do number of vowels and we can do number of consonants. I'll just do con. Oh my goodness. There we go. And we'll do total letters. Okay, so now that I've kind of typed those in, what I can do now is actually do the, the counting. So we've got to make sure that we know what a vowel and a consonant is in this particular little uh, phrase. And I'm just going to paste it right here so that I have it. Okay, so the number of vowels. So we've got one I, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I've got a total number of 16 vowels. So the number of consonants that I have, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Let's do 18 there, and then let's just double check with our total number. If we've done it correctly, we should have, what is this, 34? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Excellent. We've got 34 total letters. Okay, so now it says, what's the probability that if we were to kind of put each of those letters onto a ping pong ball, toss them into a hat, what's the probability that we'd pull out a vowel? All right, so to do this, it's pretty easy. So we're just going to write just a tiny probability statement. I'm going to say probability of pulling out a vowel. And that's going to be equal to the number of vowels that I have, which is 16 divided by the total number of letters. And that gives me this 0. 0.4705. Let's see what it gives us for the answer. It gives us 817, and I think that is the exact same probability. So this one I just wanted to do as a reduced fraction, but I really don't care. I just want us to get the percentage correctly. And so the probability that we would randomly select a vowel uh, from all of these letters is uh, like 47%. Cool. Okay, so that's kind of how we would handle maybe a probability question like that. Let's do uh, a couple more. So the next one that we are going to do is let's do this dice example. Okay, so this is one where, uh, first of all, let's kind of put in, uh, we'll do sum of dice. Okay, so what we can do here is we are rolling two dice, and this picture here gives us all possible combinations of rolling two dice. If you have a red dice and a white dice, and it goes up from two ones all the way to two sixes, and everything 
in between. So that is kind of our sample space, all possible options. Okay, and it says, so two dice have rolled. What's the probability? The sum is three. All right, so we want this probability sum equals three. All right, so we need a couple of things here. So we need number one, number of rolls that equal three and all possible rolls. Okay, so first things first, we need to count it here. If we were to sum these up, uh, what do they equal? Now, the handy thing with how they've organized this picture is that they equal the same value along the diagonal. So like, for example, if we start here, four and one equals five, three and two equals five, two and three equals five, one and four equals five. So those are all of the fives. And you can do that with the sevens. Uh, you can do that with eights all the way down to the sixes. Uh, but here we see that everything that adds up to three is just uh, two and one and one and two. That's the only way to get those. So we have that it equals two and all possible roles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times six is equal to 36 possible roles. So when we do that, we can do that our probability here of the sum equaling three is equal to the number of rolls that equal three divided by the total number of rolls. And that gives us our 0 0.55 repeating. So roughly like five and a half percent. And let's see if we can't see our answer real quick. Oops. It ran away from me. But this is the correct answer, that the sum equaling 3 is equal to, let's do, I think this is also equal to 1 divided by 18 in reduced form. And if we click on that and submit it, we got the right answer. Okay, so there's another one of kind of dealing with, okay, our sample space. We had a different sample space this time. Remember, up here, we had our sample space were like all these possible letters in this sentence. And down here, our sample space was all possible dice rolls. But the process was basically the same. We still needed to figure out our trade of interest and divide it by the total number of outcomes. And that would give us our probability. Okay, let's go ahead and do... Uh, one more example. Give me just a second. Okay, for this final example, let's do one uh, in honor of Mendel and his bean plants. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this geneticist one. We'll just call this beans. Okay, so here it says a geneticist, he conducts this experiment with beans. One sample of offspring consisted of 443 green beans and 147 yellow beans. So we can just do that right here. We can put in green and we can do yellow. And for the green, we can say that that is 443 and the yellow, we can do 147. And now it's his uh, to report the answer as a percent rounded to one decimal accuracy of the probability estimate the probability of getting an offspring bean that is green so I want to know what's the probability of getting green all right so before I do that I should probably know all beans is just equal to these two right here so I could add them together I could literally click on one and add to the other one or what I can do is just type in the word sum and highlight those two and click enter. Either way, I've got a total of 590 beans. So the probability then of being green is going to be equal to this 443 divided by 590 and I hit enter. And that is my little answer right there, 75.1. And it says, is this result reasonably close to the expected value of three-fourths? And if we look at what we got, we said, is it exactly 
three fourths, and the answer is no, that have to be 0.75. But in the real world, because we are dealing with random data and randomness, uh, we're never going to get like exactly the right answer. But this is very closely modeling uh, what our theory shows. Anyhow, so there are just a couple examples of how we can do some probability questions. Hope that helps out.